Welcome to our review on gamma radiation and medicine. First thing then, we need to understand what a radioisotope actually is. So whenever we're talking about a radioisotope, we're talking about a radioactive version of a normally stable element. Now in order to produce this radioisotope, we're going to place a material inside a nuclear reactor. When that material is inside the nuclear reactor, it's going to absorb neutrons and as a result become unstable. As it then decays, we'll emit those gamma rays which we can then use. We need to be aware of a few of the properties of our gamma rays. So first thing is they're very high frequency and have short wavelengths. They are examples of electromagnetic waves. They've got a lot of energy and they're a type of ionizing radiation. The last point that we need to remember is that they can damage or even kill cells. In terms of the uses of our gamma radiation, we can use it first of all to sterilize equipment because what happens there is the gamma rays will kill microorganisms present on the equipment. And secondly, we can use it in a machine called a gamma knife. Now, what the gamma knife actually does is it uses gamma rays in order to kill cancerous cells. So it's basically a form of cancer treatment. There are some risks associated with using this gamma radiation, however. As we've said, they can damage or kill cells, which means that it can cause cancer or even death if a high enough dose is involved. If we look at the gamma knife in a little bit more detail now to understand how it actually works. The image in the bottom left corner there shows you the actual machine. And what we find is that we've got this source of our gamma radiation and it moves around the outside. Now at all times it will be focused on the tumour, but it's going to be moving around, which means that the healthy cells that surround the tumour will not be exposed to such a high dose. So basically by moving that gamma source around, we're going to be focusing on the tumour, giving the tumour a very high dose that's big enough to kill it, but the healthy cells that surround it will not get such a high dose and therefore we're going to have a much lower dose to those healthy cells, meaning they shouldn't be damaged. Another use for this gamma radiation in medicine is as a medical tracer. So this is another way that we can actually diagnose problems with a patient without the need for surgery. And obviously if we're not carrying out operations, there's no risk of infection. So the way that this actually works is that the person will either eat or inject the tracer and obviously the determination of how the tracer gets into the body depends on what particular organ system we're looking at. And then a detector is passed over the surface and it will pick up the gamma rays that are exiting the body. Now, we need to leave that for a short time after it's been injected or ingested. Otherwise, the tracer wouldn't have had a chance to travel around the actual body to get to the places we need to investigate. If there's an area where there's a blockage or a tear, then we will see different amounts of radiation being emitted from that area, therefore targeting where the problem actually is. Finally, we need to consider why we use gamma rays for tracers. And the key thing is to do with the amount of penetration. So gamma rays, remember, are penetrating enough to be able to cross from inside the body to the detector. However, if we were to use something like an alpha particle, it's not penetrating enough to leave the body. So there's no point in using alpha as a tracer because it will never leave the body and therefore will never be picked up by our actual detector. The other thing we need to consider is the fact that whatever source we are using must have a short half-life. We don't want this radiation to persist inside the body for a long period of time. We want it to have a nice short half-life to reduce the risk to the patients and their families.